It is everything. It is everything for um, people of colour. It is everything to progress forward in the film and television industry. Now, wait a second. Fellow members of the motion picture industry and honoured guests, this is one of the happiest moments of my life to progress forward in the film and television industry. Thank you to the Academy. To progress forward in the film and television industry. I would like to thank the Academy. To progress forward in the film and television industry. What the hell are you talking about? Everyone was cast because they were the absolute best person for the role. Well, there you go, honey. That's a diversity hire. To progress forward in the film and television industry. Thank you, Academy. It's nuts. Doesn't even make sense. And to be part of a redress of balance within this world. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the demise of Amazon Prime's Rings of Power. And that's something to celebrate. The series is toast. And I mean, literally, we have a season two set fire, $250 million lawsuit, PETA protesting the death of a horse and the cast, continuing their ongoing campaign to alienate the fans, plus a report that only 37% of the audience even finished season one. And then Warner Brothers' new Lord of the Rings announcement just finished off what the fellowship started. That's the good news. Now we're going to have to hold Warner to task because they want to turn Middle Earth into the MCU. So once more, we sound the horns. Welcome, everyone. I hope you all had a phenomenal weekend, my friends. I really miss sharing my love of Tolkien and taking an axe to Jeff Bezos' billion-dollar midlife crisis. His show is finished. Anything else is just spin. I mean, when was the last time you heard anyone shout, Rings of Power is a hit, once in a lifetime fantasy? That is epic Tolkien, said no one, ever. Not even Amazon's true supporters of the bought off shills can deny the facts. Can you um, tell us um, what it was to play the first female dwarf and first dwarf of color in the on-screen uh, Tolkien universe? <laughs> This is a moment for history and a moment for so many people that will, I hope, stand the test of time. Simply use everything I had to just improvise and craft something amazing. But so honoured and so proud to be able to fly the flag for this moment. That is one big pile of shit. The evidence for season one as a total fair is irrefutable, and the cast just keeps making a mockery of themselves. You remember Sofia Novente? I mean, she humiliated herself in the studio with her interviews back in 2022. It is everything. It is everything for um, people of color. It is everything to progress forward in the film and television industry. No worries. Nothing has changed because she's back at it again. I know how important it is for the world of fantasy and for the world of Dworkin, uh, Tolkien. But so honored and so proud to be able to fly the flag for this moment because um, she is a force to be reckon with and a, and, and a dwarf at heart. And then she had the nerve to admit that they were helping Tolkien, the man who dedicated his life to create a masterwork of mythology as a gift to England based on his experiences in the trenches of World War One, which fueled his imagination. And she thinks that they helped him. A Don of Oxford, a poet, a linguist, a philologist and a writer. Yeah, he's rolling in his grave right now, Sophia, out of gratitude to you and the writers who injected modern social justice ideology to pervert his timeless work of art into a bad fan fiction series. Or your course is just on too tight. Perhaps she just loves entertaining us all with cheap laughs. But the reality is, Sophia's talking to the audience in that deadline video like she was a part of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings blockbuster trilogy instead of a billion dollar trash fire. Amazon suffers huge blow as most viewers switched off Lord of the Rings prequel. Say when the media networks and all the magazines that Amazon spends hundreds of millions on buying ad packages spend six months blowing sunshine up everyone's backside promising the end all be all of fantasy epics to come that it would be so good that even atheists would convert to worshiping Jeff Bezos as the new bald headed Buddha and those promises fell way short of the mark. Well, they're only left with one option. Retract the lies, tell the truth, in order not to burn their brand to the ground. 
While Amazon, like other streamers, provides only limited data, sources confirm that the Rings of Power had a 37% domestic completion rate. That's customers who watch the entire series. To put that into perspective, Netflix cancels any show or series that doesn't reach above 51% of a customer completion rate. That's it. You're fired. You don't reach 51%, you're done. Cut up, thrown on the bonfire, and cancel. All right, youngster, out you go. Now, you try explaining that to Lucasfilm's boss, Kathleen Kennedy's new clone over at Amazon Prime, the queen of woke tartary, Jennifer Salky. The desire to paint the show as anything less than a success, it's not reflective of any conversation I'm having internally. See, talking to yourself, Jennifer, it really doesn't count. Nor talking to the people whose paychecks you sign. But I tell you what's truly powerful is listening to all those Amazon bona fide fans, bootlickers and brown nosers who took a poem month's pause, who took a beat to show exactly how season one failed, all while promoting season two. The absolute failure of season one's 37%. Season two of Rings of Power will be a little more television friendly tell me that's not compelling we actually listen to people who loved rings of power tell it like it is i mean when i hear that i admit houston we have a problem and it's inviting and making space for other women and other points of view underrepresented points of view not just women but those who identify as women. Now, Jennifer Salke is the prime example of every problem that currently plagues the Hollywood studio system today. She's wearing blinders. Cannot distinguish between reality and ideology. Hell, she's too far gone to even run a popcorn machine. See, everyone, human being and corporation, we all have good days, we have bad days. We all rise and fall, we have successes and failures, but we try to learn with them. We try not to make the same mistakes over and over again. Not Amazon Prime. One of their answers to failure is to pump out false headlines like they've been doing ever since day one. The Rings of Power Season 3 renewal teased by Amazon Studios head. Now I'm going to set the record straight because enough is enough. Amazon Prime is contractually obligated to film five seasons. Period. End of statement. Anything else they say is complete bullshit. Pardon my French. I mean, three weeks after season one premiered, they were leaking stories to Vanity Fair and Variety that a mark of success was the fact they were considering renewing season two. And later, a month later, it was season three. None of that matters. Unless they pay off their contract, they have to film it. And on a side note, I don't think the studio is going to go past season two. They cannot handle the global humiliation. And what they did back then is the same thing they're doing today. The studio is doubling down on all these bad policies that made them into a global mockery. All the while, they're reeling in cast members to put on a positive spin on their corporate stupidity. Rings of Power star Morfid Clark feels quite protective of Galadriel. A lifelong Lord of the Rings fan, the actor hopes her elven warrior character will escape her haze of misery in the second season. Well, isn't that special? They're drafting Morfid Clark in the lead actress who's partially responsible for creating a new wave of Tourette syndrome among viewers who are watching at home. People who would have uncontrollable fits of rage who are cursing at the screen every week. And they think she's going to reel them back in to watch season two. I guess the producers forgot what Morfid told fans last year. Anyone sending hate to my black castmates, get off my page, get off the internet, and shut up. Shut the fuck up. Well, soon the rest of the cast is going to be joining Clark and pushing the company's bottom line. See, the studio a little while ago would push the cast members as if they were actual Middle Earth fanatics. So here's a little reminder about how much love they actually have for Tolkien. What's a Harfoot? It's a small person. They're a prototype of a hobbit. They're emotional, kind, and brave. Why were the Rings of Power created? To match an outfit. They couldn't even answer basic questions. Never mind. As for right now, Clark is taking center stage. No, I think we're living in a time at the moment, too, where we're reckoning with our past. Um, yeah. And we're learning from our past and we're learning about kind of the consequences of mistakes that were happened before we were born. I take responsibility. Bitch! No, I'm not responsible for anything that didn't happen before my birth. Neither are you. We are responsible for things that we have a direct control over, direct impact on. Let's see what Clark is doing right there. She's taking an overt attack against Tolkien with a subtle jab and referring to English colonialism. Because no one in Hollywood could go a moment without virtue signaling. But the reality is, Amazon has bigger problems right now. Horse dies on the set of the rings of power. 
Of course, Peter, you know, and they had a field day over what happened to that horse. And they are watching all the UK sets like hawks. Their eyes are everywhere. But don't be surprised if we find out that it was Morfitt Clark's terrifying smile that ended up our four-foot friend to kick the bucket. But seriously, Amazon really does have a big problem. They're facing a new $250 million lawsuit. Demetrius Polychron versus Jeff Bezos at Alia. Now, this really takes the cake. You have a fan fiction writer suing a studio over making a bad fan fiction series. Basically, Demetrius wrote a sequel series to The Return of the King, and he's claiming in his lawsuit against Jeff Bezos, Amazon, the Tolkien estate, everyone and their mother included, that the studio ripped him off of his dialogue and storyline. Now, I'm not an attorney, but I don't think this lawsuit's going anywhere. But it's interesting. It's all about the money, isn't it? And the reality is, is that Rings of Recycled Fantasy, my nickname for Rings of Power, failed because it tried to transform disrespect into dollars. But I also think that's the same reason why Warner Brothers is taking their shot with their new Lord of the Rings film. Think about it. They're going Amazon Prime, spend a king's fortune, saturating the airwaves with Tolkien's name till it was on every mainstream's normie lips. They're like, why not? They botched the job. We're going to take advantage of it. Elijah Wood surprised by new Lord of the Rings movies. I hope they're made with reverence for Tolkien and not just to make a lot of money. Uh, this really disturbed me because Elijah's done a true about face here. Because last year, he was fully on board with Jennifer Salky's Ring production. I mean, he went so far as to host attack campaigns against global fans who were repulsed by what the studio did in perverting Tolkien's words. He would brand them as bigots. And now... All of a sudden, he's concerned if Warner Brothers is interested in making money, but he wants them to follow in the footsteps of Jackson in making art. I mean, we had no interest in putting our messages in, into this movie, but we thought that we should honor Tolkien by putting his messages into it. Great idea. Now, why didn't I think of that? It came out of a passion for these books and wanting to see them realized, Wood said. And I hope that that is ultimately what will drive everything forward with whatever these subsequent movies are. I just hope that it's the same motivating factor at its core. Whenever they hire a screenwriter and a filmmaker, that it is with reverence for Tolkien's material enthusiasm to explore. Now, I'm all for exploring more of Middle Earth. Yes, hell yes, give it to me today. Now, do it right and do it well. But just honor the world. Or as the word is in the elven tongue of Quenya, Arda. Respect Arda. Explore it all. But we won't be able to do that because we have the perpetually jealous and spiteful Simon Tolkien, who's currently running the estate, and that's the grandson of J.R.R. Tolkien, the same man who's trying to break out of his grandfather's shot his entire life, and he's failed. That guy refuses to allow anyone to adapt the Silmarillion, the Unfinished Tales, or anything else besides Lord of the Rings. That means Warner Brothers is confined to either creating these sequels or these side stories and nothing more which means they're going to follow the Disney model and try to turn Middle Earth into its own universe, mimicking the MCU, which is exactly why the Fellowship is going to have to step up and stand tall and have its hands busy, ensuring that Warner Brothers doesn't disrespect Tolkien. Otherwise, we're going to have to make sure that they follow in the footsteps of Rings of Power and fall. We're going to have to fight fire with fire. Now, the good news is there's a silver lining to every cloud. Warner Brothers films, regardless if they miss the mark, go overreach on the can, they will sap all the oxygen out of the air for Rings of Power and confine it to the oblivion of dark silence. And on top of that, you have the animated feature The War of the Rohirrim is being released when season two comes out. Jeff Bezos' production is history. It's done and dusted. There isn't any audience to come back for season two. Well, I'm wrong there. Pardon me. There's actually 37% of the people who might return to watch it on their flat screens. Good luck. Now, if you enjoyed the video and you found value in it, hit the subscribe button, push the notification bell, and share with your family, friends, and coworkers. And leave your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. And remember that we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.